Hello, it's a pretty lovely evening from here in Chile and hope as always that each one of you are absolutely, absolutely fine and we on our part always pray to the Almighty to provide you with supreme amount of health. So on such note, we start today a chapter as you can see flashing on your screens, India's 103, of course business combination and corporate restructuring. Needless to add that it happens to be pretty heavy chapter, pretty formidable one and quite lengthy at the same time, but very important from the examination point of view. Now, before we come directly to the provisions of India's 103, of course, which deals and talks a, talks a lot about what we call business combinations, even though the name of the chapter is business combination and corporate restructuring, but I will simply refer to it as business combination. So as I was just simply talking about this particular fact that India has ended in three talks a lot about what we call business combination. But before we come over to that particular part, let me actually clarify some important what we call points so that uh, later on you should not develop any sort of what we call confusions with respect to uh, uh, several other Indias because otherwise it seems a very complex picture because many among us do not know uh, where to apply India's 110, where to apply India's 103, where to apply India's 27, where to apply India's 28. So all this confusion, first of all, let me actually raise out as I told you before I come over to India's 103. Just pay attention and if possible pick up your pen and pencil too. We come straight to the business in today. Now, <coughs> First of all, just wait. Let us say there is an entity by the name of E1. Name of the entity is E1. And this entity has invested in shares of E2 Limited. Correct? E1 has invested in shares of E2 Limited. First of all, you need to understand that the entity which invests, in this case E1 is investing some amount in the shares of E2 Limited. So, from business terminology point of view, we may call E1 as an investor. E1 is investor, correct? E1 is the entity which is investing in the shares of E2 Limited. So, E2 Limited, the company in which investment is done, is known as Investee Company. Is known as Investee Company. I'm simply starting from the scratches. So, just pay attention. These things will hold you in a very good state. Correct? E1 is the investor. E2 is the Investee Company. And henceforth, I'm not going to tell you which is the Investee Company and which is the investor. You have to keep it in your mind and store it quite well. Now, when we say this entity is investing in the other entity, where we are investing, we are investing in their shares, debentures, bonds, whatever it is, correct? Now suppose this particular entity has some share capital and I have invested in this particular entity and my investment is, let us say, in between 1 to 19 percent. 1 to 19 percent, what does it mean? Whatever is the total share capital, let us say 100% is their total share capital and I have purchased some shares. So my shareholding in this company, let us say 7%, 8%, 9%, 9 up to 19%. So if an investor invests into some other entity and the stakes are in between 1 to 19%, in that case, it is considered as normal investment. In that case, it is considered as normal investment. Normal investment. If an entity invests in other entity, correct? And their stakes are in between 1 to 19% of the total share capital of that particular entity, then it will be considered as normal investment. Why I am saying it will be considered as normal investment? Because in this case, investor... E1 entity will have to do the accounting as per India's 109. Investor will do accounting as per India's 109. This is important aspect which you need to understand. So, investor will have, have to do the accounting for the investment which it has made in the other entity. 
and the accounting will be done as per India's 109 and accounting will be done only in SFS only in SFS what does it mean only in SFS SFS means separate financial statement indirectly what I am trying to actually pull into your mind is the fact that when we invest into some other entity and our investment are less than 20% in that case we will account our investment in a normal manner and in a normal manner means we are going to do our accounting for our investment in other entity by applying the provisions of India 109. You need to require to at this particular moment bother about what India 109 states. Correct? Because that we will pick up when we will do what we call financial instrument because under financial instruments we are going to study India's 32, India's 107 and India's 109. However, at this particular point, you need to understand only one thing that investor will have to do the accounting as per India's 109, number one and accounting will be done only in separate financial statement. In other words, in this case, investor need not require to prepare consolidated financial statement. In this case, there is no need to prepare CFS. This is the first vital point which you need to understand. Correct? Coming over to the second point. Now come to the second point. We presume now there is another entity. There is another entity now. This entity is E3. This time E3 is the investor and E3 invests in E4 limited. E4 automatically will become investing company. Now if our investment is in between 20%, 20% or more, 20% or more but up to 50%, but up to 50%, correct? If I invest into some other entity, and out of total share capital of that particular entity, let us say in my hands there are 21% share, 20% share, 20% share, 35%, even 50%, but not more. In between 20 to 50%, in that case, you must understand that this investee entity will be considered as an associate of investor. E4 will be considered as associate. It will be considered as an associate company of this investor. This time E3 is the investor company and E4, the investee company will be considered as your associate. You saw earlier that when our investments are less than 20%, then we are not having any relationship with this particular entity and in that case we are not preparing any consolidated financial statement. We will have to do the accounting only in separate financial statement. However, here what will happen? In this case, investor will have to prepare two financial invest two financial statement. Investor will prepare will prepare Two financial statement. He will have to prepare this time two financial statement. Unlike the previous case, because this time we have a relationship. This entity will be considered as our associate, because when we acquire more than twenty percent stake, but less than fifty percent, it gives us significant influence over the other entity. However, we are going to take up all these terms later on when we are going to take the chapter or standard on associate. Correct. Anyway, at this moment, you need to just keep in your mind that when our investments are in between 20% to 50%, then other entity is our associate entity. In that case, we have to, we have to, means investor company will have to prepare two financial statement. One separate financial statement, obviously. One will be separate financial statement. And besides, we will have to prepare in this case, consolidated financial statement. We will have to prepare consolidated financial statement because this time we have significant influence in the other entity and we are supposed to prepare consolidated financial statement. But when we will prepare separate financial statement, separate financial statement, when this investor will prepare the separate financial statement, wherein investor will only write its own assets and liabilities. However, 
we have made some investment in, in A4 Limited. So quite obviously we will have to present that investment. So when I say investor will have to prepare two financial statement, one is separate financial statement, another one is consolidated financial statement. What I'm trying to say is that actually how the investor is going to present the investment made in the associate in its separate financial statement. In that case, in the separate financial statement, investor will have to account account the investment as per IND AS27. IND AS27. That means IND AS27 will now come into play. You saw earlier, when investor made the investment and the investment were less than 20%, only separate financial st statements are needed. And in this separate financial statement, we will account the investment in the light of IND AS109. But here we are getting some significant control, not control, but significant influence over the other entity. Other entity will become our associate. In this case, we will have to prepare two financial statements. One is separate financial statement. Another one is consolidated financial statement. Important point is how we are going to present our investment, which we have made in the associate. We will this time have to account our investment as per the provisions of India's 27. Time and again, I am telling at this particular moment, you need not require to bother about what India's 27 states, what India's 109 states, because ultimately our concentration area is India's 103. So we are going to cover up provisions of India's 103. But I just simply want to actually put into your mind some of these basic points because it, these points will help you later on, uh, correct, uh, to get away from the various other complexities. So, NDS 27 now will come into play and they will also have to prepare the consolidated, investor will also have to prepare the consolidated financial statement. However, consolidated financial statement will be prepared as per NDAS 28. As per NDAS 28. Consolidated financial statement will be prepared as per NDS 28. When we will study NDS 28 over there, we are going to study how the consolidated financial statements are prepared under NDS 28. Correct? These are very, very important points which you need to understand. So, so far, so good. Now we come over to the next point. I will keep this sheet over there. These are basic points, but these are very important points and it will definitely help you, as I told you, to uh, get away with various complexities which most of us actually are always gripped up with after this point point number third now in point number third what I write let us say there is another entity there is another entity correct and this is E5 limited E5 limited has made some investment in sh equity shares or simply shares of let us say another entity E6. However, this time we have purchased some shares of this company, but we purchased shares in, in such terms that it gave us more than 50% of the stakes of this company. Let us say total share number of shares of this company are 10,000. Out of that, if I am going to purchase 7,000 shares, then it will give me 70% stakes in this company, isn't it? So, this time, let us say E5 Limited has made investment in E6 Limited and investments are more than 50%. More than 50%. When we say more than 50%, that means whatever share capital is there, 100% share capital, out of that, more than 50% shares are in our head. Quite obviously, when an entity invests into other entity and its investments are more than 50% of the total stakes of this particular company, quite obviously in that particular company will be under our control. So this time we may say that E5 is exercising control over this, control over what we call E6 limited. So this time it will be considered that control has come to our hand. Number one. I have already told you we are investing company. I need not require to tell you we are investor company. This is investing company. I told you in the beginning itself. But besides that, this time, this company will be our subsidiary company. Subsidiary company. It will be our subsidiary company. Correct? 
this will be our subsidiary company because we have acquired now control over this particular company so this company will have to obey our instructions obey our terms so whatever guidance we are going to give to this particular company that company will have to follow simply because of the fact that we are holding more than 50 percent of the share capital of this particular company so we may say control is in our hand when we say control is in our hand that with this particular entity all the relevant all the relevant activities are in our hands is it clear to you so more or less this company is almost like our company but at the same time remember one thing that doesn't mean that this particular company has become our property this company will function as a separate entity but only thing is that this particular company will function under our directions under our terms under our what we call policies that's the major point which you need to understand now in this case investor will also be called as parent company or holding company investor will be known as parent or holding company How, however under indias we will use only term parent correct so this time we acquired more than 50 percent share of this particular company control has come to us now this time it will be termed as business acquisition because we have acquired this con this particular company in substance correct because this company is more or less our company even though it will keep on functioning as a separate unit unit no question about that but at the same time in substance if in reality actually if you will look into we'll find that this company as if almost our company because this particular company is running as per our direction our policies so when we acquire more than 50 percent shares in a particular entity the control will come to us and it will be termed as business acquisition it will be termed as business acquisition is it clear to you now in this case now in this case pay attention very very important this time because again there is a relationship between the investor and investee the relationship is much more powerful than the previous case in the previous one there was relationship uh, between the investor and investee is of investor and associate but now there is a relationship between these two entity of parent and what we call subsidiary company so now what will happen in this case parent limited will have to prepare two financial statement Parent Limited will have to prepare two financial statements. I need not require to tell you financial statements. Parent will have to prepare two financial statements. One will be separate financial statement. One separate financial statement. And separate financial statement will always be prepared as per end AS27. That means when Parent Limited will prepare or keep track of only its own assets and liability in the separate financial statement. Separate financial statement. So sometimes we also call it a standalone what we call statement. So separate financial statement wherein we are going to put up our assets and liabilities. Since we have made investments in this particular company, how we should present that investment? That will be as per end AS27. End AS27. correct and besides that now i will have to prepare consolidated financial statement consolidated financial statement very important now and most of us are unaware of all these points you are few among those now who will know this tricky point now i will have to now i means this company e5 e5 limited will have to prepare consolidated financial statement logically in practical life when i take over another entity and when we say when uh, when we say that we are taking over other entity that doesn't mean that we are completely taking over that means we are acquiring control over the other entity when we acquire control over the entity that automatically means actually directly or indirectly we have taken over that particular entity it is quite simple so in that case e5 limited will have to prepare consolidated financial statement on the date of acquisition on the date of acquisition or 
date of control sometime we say date of acquisition date of acquisition means the date on which control actually has been acquired by you you are the acquirer company you are the acquirer company correct now you will have to prepare consolidated financial statement on the date of acquisition now you need to understand on this date when you are going to prepare the consolidated financial statement you will prepare it as per india 103 many students and many others are having this confusion sir when we talk about consolidation people say that india 110 is related with consolidation some people say india 103 is also related with consolidation now you must understand when we are going to consolidate consolidate means when we are going to prepare the consolidated financial statement on the date of control on that date i will have to apply the provisions of india 103 and at the year end at the year end or subsequently after this date whenever i am going to prepare consolidated financial statement at the end of financial year whenever our accounting year will end correct in that case again i will have to prepare the consolidated financial statement correct on the reporting date on the reporting date when we will prepare consolidated financial statement in that case consolidated financial statement shall be prepared as per india 110 as per india 110 this is the significant point which you need to understand as I told you many among us are under confusion when to apply India 110 and when to apply India 103 because directly or indirectly both talk about consolidation and that is why this confusion has gripped many but very few are aware of the reality. So when we acquire another entity we acquire the control of the other entity correct that becomes a case of business acquisition in that case we are parent company holding company or acquirer company while other company is subsidiary company or acquiry company we are acquirer and other companies acquiry company in that case acquirer company or the parent company will have to prepare financial statement quite obviously it will have to prepare the separate financial statement and besides that it will have to prepare consolidated financial statement but how the consolidated financial statements are prepared on the first day when i say on the first day that will on the date of acquisition this particular chapter deals with this particular point is it clear to you? India has ended in three. That is the theme. That is the crux. That is the focal point of this particular chapter. While when when at the year end or on the reporting date we will prepare consolidated financial statement that we are going to study under India has ended in ten. Correct. So that is the point, and that is also the reason why it is always better to do India has ended in three first and then follow it up with India has ended in ten. So these are the points which you need to know and uh, that will hold you in a, in a very very good state. Is it clear to you or not? Besides, although the main point which I just wanted to tell, uh, I have already told you. But besides that, because now I have started this topic, let me finish it also. Besides, there could be some other situation. For example, let us say, let us say, uh, what should I say? Let us say there are two entities, E1 and E2. Correct? There are two entities, E1 and E2. Both these entities enter into a joint arrangement. Joint arrangement. Both these entities enter into a joint arrangement. And joint arrangement is in the form of joint operation. Correct? Joint operation. Let us say both these entities have decided that we are going to construct a pipeline. Let us say both these industries, both these entities are in oil industry. Let us say. Correct? And let us say they are facing a problem to ship their oil to Bangladesh. So they enter into a mutual agreement. Okay, why not actually let us build, correct, with common efforts a pipeline 
and we will use that pipeline to supply our oil to the other countries, in this case Bangladesh. Is it clear to you? So that, that is nothing but a joint venture. That means in this case, both these entities are combining to start some operation. Combining to start some operation. It is known as joint venture. Joint, it is known as joint operation. And joint operation is one form of joint arrangement. First of all, you need to understand this. Correct? So in this company, both E1 and E2 will have to prepare SFS, separate financial statement. E1 will also prepare separate financial statement and E2 will also prepare separate financial statement. That means they need not require to prepare consolidated financial statement. And separate financial statement will be prepared as per IND AS 111. In this case, IND AS 111 will come into play because IND AS 111 deals with all these facets of joint arrangement. Joint arrangement basically of two types when we are going to study this particular standard then we will talk a lot about it. One is joint operation. You understand actually what exactly the joint operation is. In this case simply two or more than two entities will combine into and they will start what we call a joint operation. And they will share the results of that operation. That's all. However, there could be another form of joint venture. I will keep this sheet over here. There is another form. Uh, let us say fifth point. In this case, let us say there are entity E1 and E2. E1 and E2 this time decided to enter into a venture. To enter into a venture, what does it mean to enter into a venture? Correct? That means let us say they have decided to open a new company. This new company will be known as Venture. This new company is nothing but joint venture because they have jointly started this particular venture or business. Correct? And this venture will function almost like a company. So in this case, E1 and E2 will be known as investor or venturer as you may call it. But the point here is that it is also a form of joint arrangement. But this time it is known as joint venture as I told you. It is known as joint venture. In the earlier case E1 and E2 actually they simply combined with each other to start what and they constructed a pipeline. Correct? But here both these companies enter into an agreement and they combinedly what we call are opening a new venture. So in the new venture obviously they are going to invest something and obviously whatever results will be there they are going to share it. So joint venture it is. In this case both E1 and E2 correct will have to prepare separate financial statement correct separate financial statement I have already told you separate financial statement shall be prepared as per India S27 and besides that they will have to prepare consolidated financial statement but consolidated financial statement will be prepared as per end AS28 end AS28 are you getting my point or not this time E1 is venturer and this one will be considered as its joint venture. E2 is venture. This will be considered as joint venture of this entity. Is it clear to you? You must have noticed one thing. Consolidated financial statement can be prepared under India's 103, can be prepared under India's 110, can be prepared under India's 28. Generally, it Consolidated financial statement will be prepared under end AS 28 when we do not have the full control over the other entity. Consolidated financial statement as per end AS 110 will be prepared when we have full control over the other entity but we are going to prepare it on the reporting date. When we are preparing it on the reporting date then only end AS 110 will come into play. While in day 103 is quite vital in the sense because here again we are having control of the other enterprise. But the day on which we acquire control, on that date, 
we are going to prepare a consolidated financial statement then india's 103 will come into play so these are the things which as a professional student you need to know before you delve into what we call uh, business combination now we come over to the next part correct in this case now in the next part just wait some important points uh, i will also write before we move further so that you shouldn't skip them uh, if investments if investments are more than 50% in that case, in that case, I have already told you, in fact, this point, investor is known as parent or acquirer company or Acquirer company. Is it clear to you? Note number two. Investor. Its subsidiaries. Other entity could be our subsidiary only when we have more than 50% stake in it. Investor, its subsidiary or associate or joint arrangement. We were talking about joint arrangement earlier. So, if I am an investor and I have a subsidiary or an associate or a joint arrangement, in that case, combinedly, all these points combinedly will be known as group. Investor, its subsidiary or associate or joint arrangement are combinedly known as group. Combinedly. Known as group. Correct? Third. Accounting. of investments accounting of investments in subsidiary accounting of investments in subsidiary associate joint venture In SFS shall be done as per India S27. We have already talked about this. So, if I have a subsidiary or I have a associate or I have a joint venture, in that case, I am supposed to prepare what we call. Uh, separate financial statement in that case whatever investment I have made I will account those investments as, as per India's 27 correct we will see later on actually just for the time being actually I am telling you what what India's 27 states India's 27 simply states that investments investments in subsidiary associate joint venture correct can be at cost can be represented at cost suppose i have acquired 10000 shares of rupees 10 each but i paid 150000 so i can reflect the investment at rupees 150000 so I can reflect the investment at cost or I can reflect the investment or India's 27 states that you can reflect your investment at cost or 
as per India S109. In the S27 states that you can reflect the investment either at cost or as per the what we call guidelines of India S109. And India S109 simply states that you can represent your investment at fair value. I do not want to confuse you at this particular moment. Actually, India S109 states that you can classify your investment at fair value through profit and loss account or fair value through OCI. But if, but if I am going to use these terms at this particular point, you won't be able to comprehend anything. So for simplicity, I have told you that India S109 simply tells that you can represent your investment at fair value. So what my point is, try to understand where is the rough sheet. Suppose I have purchased 10,000 shares of rupees 10 each. This is the nominal value, 1 lakh. And let us say, I have purchased this share for rupees at the rate of 15. So this is my cost. So I can reflect my investment either at cost or at fair value. Let us say fair value is 1,75,000. So I can reflect it at 1,75,000. Are you getting my point or not? So that is the point here. So in the S27 states that you can reflect in your separate financial statement your investment either at cost or as per the provisions of India 109 and India 109 simply states that you can reflect your investment at fair value, at fair value. Now, further, when we make the investment in other entity, quite obviously we are bound to get some return out of it. We may receive dividend or interest in it. So, we need to understand a uh, vivid also any dividend, any dividend or interest on such investments on such investments shall be recognized or should be recognized in PNL should be recognized in PNL Remember one thing, this point is with respect to separate financial statement because India S27 deals with separate financial statement. So, India S27 states that when you have made your investment in subsidiary joint venture or joint arrangement or joint operation, in that case you will account your investment either at cost or at 100 or what we call as per India S109, that means at fair value. Further, whatever dividend or interest income which you are going to receive on such investment, you are going to reflect at in your PNL. It is as simple as that. These are the provisions of India 27. Now, after having a look over these basic points, and honestly speaking, these are quite vital. Now we move over to the main area. Let's come over to business combination. So, what is business combination? First of all, let's have an idea regarding that. So let's understand it. Meaning. Meaning of business combination. I have already told you, business combination will occur only when you will get control over the other entity. Correct? So, business combination occurs when a company, when a company acquires when a company acquires control over control over business of other entity other entity business of other entity Logically, it means, just wait for a while before I move further, let me clarify this particular point. Suppose, E1 takes over E2. When I say takes over, 
I mean to say E1 is taking control of E1 and you know control can be acquired by investing in this entity correct and our investment is more than 50% so control will come to us but the point is that when we take over the other entity it is very important that other entity must meet the definition of business it is very important that other entity must meet the definition of business if I am taking control of other entity and other entity is not meeting the definition of business in that case it will not be called as business combination and quite obviously in that particular case India's 103 will not come into play that when India's 103 will come into play only when you are taking control over the other entity indirectly it means you are taking control over the business of the other entity that when other entity must satisfy the what we call term business what we mean by business then it is also very important so control occurs when a company acquires control over business of the other entity so it is very important to understand business business means standard defines business as a set of integrated activity integrated Business means integrated set of activities. Integrated set of activities. Integrated set of activities having following having following three elements. So standard says that Business basically means integrated set of what we call activities and so basically these integrated activities are nothing but set of three elements. What are those three elements? One is known as input. Other one is known as processes. Processes. And third one is known as output. What is input? When I take over the business, when I say that other entity is a business, what does it mean? That means when I am taking over the other entity, other entity has got some resources, such resources and assets or the manpower. Correct? So, inputs basically means like uh, resources. Resources, that is assets required. to generate to generate output example for example various property plant and equipments various intangible assets manpower all these are examples of inputs correct then processes simply means techniques technical know-how expertise actually correct so processes simply refers to simply refers to techniques technical know-how technical know-how that can be used that can be used on inputs to generate To generate output correct so when we say processes that mean we are talking about uh, techniques we are talking about technologies know-how 
we are talking about management process or simply management that is what we mean by process is it clear to you and many people actually don't able to understand are not able to understand should i say the real meaning of output in the context of this term business of course business is a set of activities and it has got three element as we have seen one is input another one is process third one is output output doesn't mean that these things should be capable of producing the producing the output that means there must be ability if i am going to integrate input and output input and process that mean i should be able to produce what we call some output and output basically refers to uh, your production units or dividend or profits that sort so output it means ability to generate revenue by using using input and processes try to understand this way down suppose in the market there is another entity by the name of e2 and i am the investor and let us say more than 50% stakes i am ready to invest in this particular entity however this entity is quite new in the trade this entity is quite new in the trade and this entity has let us say developed a patents correct developed a patent high quality technology they have developed and this entity has already entered into some negotiations with the potential customer to sell or to let out these patents on franchise and if i am taking over this particular entity even though at this particular at this particular moment let us say this entity is not generating any revenue but that doesn't mean that it is not a business this entity is still will be considered business because if i am going to take over its patents that mean all its inputs and processes then i will have the ability to generate the revenue because in that case i will acquire the patents and i can or easily what we call contact those clients with whom already they are entering into and in that case i will be able to generate the revenue so even though entity might not be producing output at this particular moment but if we have the ability that mean by combining the processes with the input if we are able to produce the output or generate the output that will be considered as part that this entity is meeting the definition of business so very important is that when we say we are acquiring the control of the other entity that mean basically we are acquiring the control over the business of the other entity in days 103 will come into play only when one entity acquires another entity acquires means acquiring the control of the other entity and other entity must meet the definition of business and business simply means resources and what we call processes which can be combined with each each other to generate some revenue that is important now one more point is i told you business combination occurs when company acquires control over the business of other entity control over the other entity see it here control control can be acquired control a can be acquired by acquiring by acquiring more than fifty percent equity shares. So, if I will get more than fifty percent of the equity shares of the other other entity, quite obviously control will be in my hands. So, this is one way of getting the control. We call it majority stakes. Is it clear to you? 
However, in rare cases, control can also be acquired B or by acquiring by acquiring power to constitute or compose board of directors. Board of directors of other entity. Other entity means acquiry entity. For example, what I want to say actually, suppose there is a, this is acquired entity, let us say, this entity is acquiring this entity. And let us say we have made an investment of only 10%. Logically, in this case, it cannot be construed that we have acquired the control over this particular entity, is it? It is not possible. We are 10% will not fetch us any control. However, let us say there is an agreement between this entity and us that this entity will have the power to compose the board of director or to constitute the board of director. To compose or uh, constitute the board of director means we have we shall have the ability and power to appoint or to discard or to set the remuneration of the board of directors. So in that case, it is said that we are having the what we call power to compose the board of director. So sometime it happens in practical life. But even in this case, I will have to make some investment. Suppose my investment is 10%, 15%, 30%, less than 50%. But if I have got this particular sort of agreement, so even in that case, it will be said that control will be in, control is in my hand. Then the next point is, or by, or by acquiring or by acquiring power to direct all relevant activities. So sometime we may get power Actually, in these two cases, power will accrue to us only through some agreements. Sometimes there is an agreement between the acquirer and acquiree. So, even though if my investment will be less than 50%, but if there are some agreements like this, so in that case, uh, acquirer will be in the driver's seat and it will be considered as if acquirer is having the control of the other entity. So, logically, control is acquired through investment. And generally, if your investment is more than 50%, easily you will have the control. Sometimes your investment is less than 50%, but in that case, there may be an agreement like that you will have the, what we call, right to compose the board of director, or you will have the right and the power to direct the relevant activities. So in such cases, it will be said, and it will be construed as if the control is in our hand. Is it clear to you? Importantly, this is one way of getting the control. Remember, in this case, in all these cases, we have to make some investments. We have to invest something in all these cases. Whether our investment is more than 50%, 10%, 20%, but some investment we will have to make. However, there is another situation. Control, control can also be acquired Control can also be acquired by acquiring by acquiring net assets of the other entity. This time we are not making any investment. Net assets of acquiry company of acquiry company this is very important when you get the net assets all the net assets of the other entity quite obviously now other entity will become your entity and in this case the other entity will stop what we call functioning 
However, when you get the control in this manner through some investment, other entity will keep continue to operate. That's a different matter. It will operate under your what we call wings, under your directions. However, when you control, when you get the control or when you acquire the other entity by purchasing its net assets, automatically in, the, in that case, the existence of other entity will definitely be no more. Other entity will cease to operate. It will stop operating the things. Control can also be acquired by acquiring net assets of the other entity and in this case in this case other entity in this case acquiry entity in this case acquiry entity shell stop operating stop operating so in this case operating company will cease to operate it is very important it is clear to you or not also in this case acquirer Acquirer company will account business combination because we have acquired their business, so it's a case of business combination. Acquirer will account business combination in separate financial statement only as per India hundred and three as in this case no CFS is required I told you generally when we acquire the other entity we are supposed to prepare what we call consolidated financial statement but this is the case wherein without making any investment in fact this time you are purchasing the business of the other entity and this time the existence of the other entity is no more so quite obviously you cannot prepare consolidated financial statement so whatever accounting you will do you will do in your separate financial statement however such cases are quite rare in practical life generally the control is required and control generally is required through investments by investing more than 50 percent so in that case existence of the other con other company will be there so you will have to prepare consolidated financial statement on the date of acquisition so significantly this particular standard basically talks about how the accounting will be done in the books of acquirer on the date when you get the control of the other entity is it clear to you or not so now we come to the main area of this particular topic after having a look over the initial facets correct so now i write here accounting for business combinations accounting for business combination In days 103 states that in order to account we will have to apply acquisition method as most of you are quite familiar or might be familiar with this. Correct? In days 103 provides provides accounting for business combination for business combination on the date of acquisition 
on the date of acquisition so often i am going to use this word so i will write d o a date of acquisition so on the date of acquisition how the acquirer is going to do the accounting that's the actually main theme so following steps are required what are those steps following steps are required following steps are required Presume you are the acquirer and you have got the control over other entity, correct? Let us say you have invested in other entity and your investment is in the vicinity of 70%, 80%, that is more than 50%. So obviously you have acquired the control. So first thing which you are supposed to do is step number one, as per this particular standard, the first thing which you are supposed to do is step number one, identifying the acquirer company. Now you may wonder actually why this step has been laid out by this particular standard identifying identifying the acquirer Quite obviously, acquirer company is the one which obtains the control of the other entity, no doubt about it. And generally let me actually make it this sometime what happens let us say there is an entity a limited acquires control let us say invest in 55 percent of this entity this entity has invested in 55 percent share capital of this entity so we have the majority stake we are acquirer company when we when we'll make the investment in other entity quite obviously we are getting control of the other entity so it is so we are known as acquirer entity and this entity is known as acquiry entity without any doubt however we are legal acquirer legal acquirer means in the eyes of the law we are the acquirer and b is the legal acquiry no doubt about it 99.99% the legal acquirer will remain the accounting acquirer. No doubt about that. 99.99% the entity which is taking over the other entity, the acquirer company, generally is also known as accounting acquirer. Actually, as per this particular step, when we say identifying the acquirer, it basically means for the purpose of accounting who is the acquirer it means sometime on some rare situation it may happen that in spite of the fact that someone is the legal acquirer but for the purpose of accounting other entity may come into play are you getting my point or not for example here a limited has taken over b limited so A is legal acquirer, B is legal acquirer, that means from the legal provisions, A will remain acquirer, legal acquirer and B will remain legal acquirer. However, accounting acquirer, generally accounting acquirer means the entity who has got the control. So in this case, A has invested, it, uh, invested in uh, more than 50% uh, stakes or B limited quite obviously in this case A limited is having the control so A will also be the accounting acquirer that is the reason why I am saying 99.99% legal acquirer will remain accounting acquirer however sometime it happens sometime it happens that legal acquiry may become accounting acquirer for example let us say A limited takes over B limited. Correct? However, there is an agreement between A and B limited that we will have the control. So, here in this case, because A is taking over the B limited, technically A is the legal acquirer and B is the legal acquiry. Legal acquiry. But for the purpose of the accounting, B will be considered as legal acquirer because control is in the hands of B. That is what we mean by accounting acquirer. So, identifying the acquirer, basically, what does it mean? First of all, identifying the acquirer. Acquirer is the company 
acquirer is the company who obtains the control over the business over the business of acquiring acquiry company so suppose in this case company a acquires company b as i told you company a will be considered as legal acquirer and company b will be considered as legal acquirer so basically identifying the acquirer means identifying the acquirer means identifying the acquirer for the purpose of accounting identifying the acquirer means identifying identifying the acquirer for the purpose of accounting for the purpose of accounting ninety nine point nine nine percent legal acquirer remains the accounting acquirer however in rare cases legal acquiry could also be the accounting acquirer and if it happens if legal acquiry becomes the accounting acquirer that is known as a case of reverse acquisition regarding which we are going to study later on although most of time legal acquirer shall remain accounting acquirer accounting acquirer yet sometimes sometimes legal acquiry too could be sometimes legal acquiry could be accounting acquire could be accounting acquire so it is a possibility could be accounting acquirer when legal acquiry becomes when legal acquiry becomes when legal acquiry becomes accounting acquirer then it is known as a case of 
रिवर्स एक्विजिशन रिवर्स एक्विजिशन रिवर्स एक्विजिशन then it is known as a case of reverse equation is it clear to you or not so these are the things which you need to know but lots of things we still have to take into account so this was our first step second step is now second step determining the date of equation of course this is very very vital date of acquisition so generally the date of acquisition is the one in which actually acquirer company obtains the control over the acquiry company no doubt about that and most of the time it is given in the question itself so we do not confront much problem in it date on which acquirer company date on which acquirer company obtains control over acquiry company but if any approval is needed or required from government required from government then date of then date of approval by the government shall be considered shall be considered as date of acquisition so this is quite vital step because on the date of acquisition ultimately we will have to do the accounting the next step is third step determination of purchase consideration of course it will be given in the question determination of purchase consideration how much money you are going to pay to the acquiry correct the consideration which your company will give to the acquiry company you have to determine that honestly speaking in 99.99% it will always be given in the question however some concept based question could be asked for with respect to determination of purchase consideration some small question of 3 4 marks so we have kept a separate section also uh, for that wherein we have included only questions on computation of purchase consideration otherwise in longer questions purchase consideration will always be given correct uh, determination of purchase consideration generally amount of consideration amount of consideration shall be given shall be given however it can be computed
as follows. So, in order to compute the purchase consideration, all we have to do is to add if we are transferring any cash, fair value of fair value of any asset because purchase consideration can be given in any form. If you have given any asset, you will take the fair value. Fair value of equity shares equity shares debentures so whatever you have given equity shares or debentures you will simply what we could take their fair value similarly present value of deferred consideration we will talk about it but we have kept a separate section regarding deferred consideration when i will take that topic i will explain deferred consideration similarly fair value of contingent liability We will explain all these points because we have kept separate sections for deferred consideration, contingent liability, etc. So you need not require to bother about that. The third point is what we call computation of purchase consideration and purchase consideration will be given to you even if it is not given. In the longer question, it will always be given, honestly speaking. In conceptual question, in smaller questions, they may ask you to compute the purchase consideration. So it is not a tough task that we will explain when we are going to take up what we call this particular topic. Correct. Now the next step, fourth step is now you have decided the, you have determined who is the acquirer, number one. You have also determined that what is the date of acquisition you have concluded at what amount of consideration you are going to pay to the acquiry now quite obviously the next step is identifying the net assets which you are going to take over of the acquiry identifying the net assets taken over of acquiry by acquirer. And here you need a bit of what we call a uh, bit of caution because uh, sometime otherwise we may commit in understanding this particular step anyway at this moment i am going to hold down this particular lecture and we'll continue in the next session we'll come up with many more things